In this lesson, we'll be looking at the idea of composition of components when building applications with React. And we'll also be completing our project here to fit this project that we got from Dribble. First thing first, npm run dev to run our local development server. Now in the previous lesson, we looked at rendering list, which allows us to map through some items and then we can return a GSX for that map. Now composition of component is something that we have already been looking at. The idea is that components are building blocks. Just like you want to build a house and you have different building blocks that you use for that house, that's the same idea of composition of component. So a component can be your IMG tag, which you can use in different ways, providing the SRC and all those stuff. A component can be your button element. Component can be your anchor element. Component can be your div element. And not just the element that comes from HTML, but even in this case, pricing card is also a component. And if we go into pricing card here, you see we're using different HTML elements. So think of all of these as building blocks. For example, as we want to build this pricing card component, we used all these building blocks up to this point. And for us to build the app component, we used this div and then we use this pricing card in a rendering list as a building block for the component. And you can make your component as small as you would like. For example, if we go to pricing card here, we can also make a button component and put that button component in the pricing card. And let's do that. So in the components here, I'll create a folder button and in button, I'm going to have button.gsx and I also have button.module.css. So here my button, I can do export default function button. And then this button is going to receive some props and the properties I'm interested in for this button is class name and children. Do you remember the children prop? I hope you do. And then here I can take this button from this place here and I can do return and I can paste it here. And then up here I can import my CSS module. So import styles from button.module.css. Then this is going to be styles.card button. And instead of styles card button here, I'm just going to do styles.button. And for this button, I'm just going to have padding 10 pixels. And then here in this button, this is also going to get the class name that comes from the parent so I can add that class name to this one here wrap this as an expression so styles.button is one of the classes then the other class is the class coming from the parent component and then for the children instead of putting choose here I'm going to put the children prop here now coming to this pricing card I can import the button components and then come in here I can now use that button component and then for the children remember the children is what is between the open and closing tag so for the children I can now add choose and here we now have our button component so you see that we can make our components as small as possible which will make those components easily manageable and now since this receives a class name prop I can pass class name and I can pass styles dot card button remember card button is coming from the pricing card module here so i pass this class name to this button and if you go to the button the button takes this class name here and appends it here but now we have a problem because in this button module.css this has a padding of 10 pixels so if we make this 50 pixels you see our button has 50 pixels so even when we come here and then we now have a padding of 15 pixels you see that the 15 pixels takes less priority and this one here takes more priority. So when you are using different components, sometimes you might have this conflict of styles and you'd have to manage those styles in a better way. And we'll be seeing different ways to manage these styles as we continue. But in this case, I can either take this padding off and then the padding would come from this pricing card module.css or I can keep the padding here, but then in the pricing card, I can increase the specificity to say card and then dot card button. So now this is going to take more priority because here I have two classes and here I have just one class. These are some of the things that can occur when you are using different components and you are passing class name into those components. Now that that's out of the way, let's improve our project to match this. First, I'm going to go back to my pricing card. In this pricing card, you see that the buttons 
have a color of white and there is a bit of later spacing in them card card button then we can add color white and then we can add later spacing then we should increase the font size a bit so maybe 1.2 rem next up let's improve the colors here so that this one has this purple this one orange this one light blue i'm going to come to this pricing card i'm going to create an object called team class for the first team startup is going to have a class using my styles module i'm going to have card hyphen hyphen startup well because i have hyphens i need to use the bracket notation then for the pro this is going to have card pro then for the enterprise this is going to have card enterprise or this should be team classes then here i can have my team class and this is going to be team classes using the bracket notation i pass the label that is coming in so this is going to be the label so when the label is startup team class is going to be this when the label is pro team class will be this when the label is enterprise team class would be this and now i can append my team class so i have styles.card and then i also have the team class now coming to the CSS of pricing card module.css here I'm going to have card startup card pro card enterprise in this card pro this is the orange so I'm going to take this price team and price team DACA to card pro and now you can see card pro has all this orange stuff because card pro has these custom properties now for card startup I'm also going to have my price team and price team DACA I'm going to use my color picker again pick this purple I'm going to get the hexadecimal code and paste here for the DACA shade which is at the edge here and then I pick this this darker shade paste it here now you can see that the startup is now looking more like this and then same thing for the enterprise pick this blue color and I paste it here then I'm also going to copy the dark shade select this color and I can paste it and now we have this which is much closer so this is purple this is orange this is blue and also coming here this is purple this is orange and this is blue so each of these cards have a price team and a price team darker and then we use those variables in different places for example the color of the label also the color of the benefits label also the background of the button and even the border of the button has that darker and that is still not all if we scroll to the top here you can see this part that says choose your plan so let's go ahead to app.js and do that so just before the prizes going to have another div and by the way one thing i forgot to mention in the previous lessons is that you see we have a div here and we have a div here but now we are getting an error and the error says adjacent gsx element must be wrapped in an enclosing tag now what this means is that when you are returning a gsx element you cannot return two adjacent elements this means you cannot return this and this at the same time now in a separate lesson i'm going to go more into detail to help you understand why this error exists but for now just take it that you cannot return two elements like this even if it's a p you cannot return two elements like this you can only return one element and then you can have as many children as you want in that element so in this case here taking this back to div and div we're now going to take all this div and put it inside of this one and now we have just one direct element so you cannot return two direct elements you can only return one direct element they can have as many children as you want in that direct element so for this one here i'm just going to maybe give it background so class name styles.bg and here i can have my h1 that says choose your plan then i have my p this is just some lorem ipsum stuff so i'll just paste some lorem ipsum that i copied online yeah i think this lorem ipsum is even too much so let me reduce it now that i have this i can now style it so going to app.modu.css i'm going to have my dot bg i'm also going to select this background blue color from here and i can have my background color and paste that bg here and then here we can have a div that has styles.text and then i'll put this not styles.text let me use a better name like styles.info and then i put this here and then for this bg we can give this padding 20 pixels and then we can also give this bg maybe a height of 500 pixels now, of course this bg is going to push these prizes down so now i can come to these prizes give it the position of relative and then give it a top of let's say 
minus 200 pixels and now this card will go up now i have a separate video where i explained the difference between top and margin top in css i'll link it below so you can understand better why i'm using top instead of margin top in my global.css i'm also going to create a utility class called container this is going to have a max width of 1000 pixels and it's going to have a padding of 20 pixels and i'm going to position it at the center so now having that class i can come to my app.gsx and then in this styles.prizes i can have my prizes style and then i can concatenate it with container i'm also going to go to my pricing card.modu so here in the pricing card.modu each of them have a max width of 280 pixels and that's why if you notice the space at the left here is different from this place at the right here so let me make this a bigger max width like 500 pixels okay now we have equal spaces and then here with this grid we can contain those sizes okay now that we have this we can go back to app.js here we're going to add a class name we'll give this styles dot heading class name styles dot description then here in our app dot module we can say dot heading text align center or we can put the text align center on the bg itself so the heading and the description each have a max width of 400 pixels and margin auto so that it's at the center then for the heading this has a text transform of uppercase then for the bg 20 pixels is not enough so let's make it 40 pixels so that it goes down or even 50 pixels the heading will also have a margin bottom of maybe 20 pixels well 400 pixels as the max width is too small so let's make it 500 pixels or 600 pixels we probably want to make our description bigger so description font size 1.2 rem so maybe if i make this 550 pixels okay we now have this now we need to make this top even more 250 pixels now another thing here is that these cards have a box shadow but this does not have a box shadow and also it has a background of white so now i want to go back to my global.css and remove this background color then for my pricing card I want to put a box shadow. Now box shadows can be a bit hard to get right. So I'm just going to play around some values here. I think this looks just okay. And maybe the card should have a bigger border radius of like five pixels. Now one more thing that is missing is that this pro card is taller than the other cards. So here we can come to card.pro and we can set a custom property called padding why let's say this is 60 pixels but by default on each of the card the padding y is going to be 40 pixels now coming to the card wrapper since the card wrapper is under this card that means it would have access to this custom property so instead of using padding 40 pixels 10 pixels i can use the padding y custom property and now you see that the pro has more padding let's even make this more obvious with 80 pixels but you can see that everything is still the same length here that is because all the items are stretched to have the same height for this i can come to my app.mode.css where i have my grid and i can have align items so by default the align items is stretch that is why all the items are stretched but if i should do flex start you see all the items start at the same top but they don't have the same height if i use flex end you see all the items go to the end but what i need in this case is center so let's go back to pricing card let's reduce this padding y to 60 pixels and then coming back here we want to take this up by 350 pixels so that it's closer oops that's a lot let's keep it at 300 i know i change figures a lot but i want to change this to 70 pixels so that the pro card is obviously taller and now we have this in fact you can even choose to make this bg a component of its own in this case i'm not going to do that because this is just little information that i want to keep here but if it's something that might potentially get bigger or something that you want to keep in isolation or maybe you want to use this same style in multiple places then you can put that in a component and reuse it and this is the idea of composition of components you have different components they can be as small and specific as possible and all of those are building blocks that you can then use to build bigger components so that is the idea of composing those components to form bigger components so that's it for this lesson in the next lesson we'll be looking at conditional rendering which is a concept that allows you to conditionally render some components